Rolls-Royce is the most expensive car brand in the world, with some of the most expensive cars, like Rolls-Royce La Rose Noir Droptail, Rolls-Royce Boat Tail, and Rolls-Royce Swept Tail. With a staggering market valuation of over $43 billion, Rolls-Royce stands as a titan in the automotive industry. But did you know that this multi-billion dollar empire was founded by a boy who grew up in poverty with almost no formal education? Yes, Henry Royce, the man behind this legend, started his first million dollar company with just $20 to his name. So, how did he do it? What's the secret behind the success of Rolls-Royce? And how did it become the world's most expensive car maker? Get ready to dive into the extraordinary history of Rolls-Royce. This is the story of how Rolls-Royce became the most luxurious car brand in the world. In 1863, in a small town in England, Henry Royce was born into a family that struggled to make ends meet. Life wasn't easy, they had little money, and things got even harder when they lost their business. Henry, even as a young boy, had to work. At nine, he faced an even bigger blow when his father passed away. Tough times forced Henry to work even harder, selling newspapers and delivering telegrams instead of going to school. Despite these challenges, Henry had a dream. He was fascinated by how things worked, especially machines. With just one year of schooling, Henry's real classroom was life itself. At 15, he got a chance to learn more about engineering through an apprenticeship in the Great Northern Railway Company. He grabbed it with both hands, eager to learn everything he could. But money problems hit again, and he had to leave his studies behind. Yet, Henry didn't give up. He kept moving, from job to job, learning all he could about electricity and engineering. By the age of 22, with a mind full of ideas and a heart full of dreams, Henry with his friend Ernest Claremont started his own company called F.H. Royce & Company in 1884. They made electric gadgets like doorbells and switches. It was hard at first, but in 1894, they were already making dynamos and electric cranes. Henry's hard work paid off. Their products got better and better and the business started to grow. However, despite this success, Henry was already setting his sights on something even more ambitious, to create the most luxurious car in the world. In 1901, Henry purchased a used two-cylinder French car called French Decaville. Unfortunately, it was in such terrible condition that it wouldn't even start. But by the next day, Henry had it working again. And instead of stopping there, he continually made improvements to address all the faults he found with it. Eventually, Henry decided rather than improving this car, he should build his own, and in 1904, he custom-built three cars which were given the model name Royce 10. The first car was for himself, the second was given to his business partner, Ernest, but the third was sold to a man who was so impressed by the vehicle that he introduced Henry to a car dealer named Charles Rolls. Charles Rolls was very different from Henry Royce. He came from a wealthy family, went to the best schools, and had a passion for cars and flying. Despite their differences, Henry and Charles shared the same dream to build the best cars in the world, and together, they were about to make history. Charles Rolls was born in 1877 to the first Baron and Lady Langattic. Even from a young age, Charles was always tinkering with mechanical objects, earning him the nickname Dirty Rolls from his friends. Tended the prestigious Cambridge University for Mechanical and Applied Science, and after graduation, he worked on a yacht before moving on to work for the London and Northwestern Railway. Charles was also one of the very first people in the UK to own a car. In fact, there's even a photo of him from 1896 in his Peugeot Phaeton, which he bought in Paris at just 18 years old. He loved cars so much that his father gave him the money to open a car dealership. This was called C.S. Rolls & Co., and he began importing French cars to sell to English customers. So clearly, Charles had a very different upbringing to Henry, and Charles undoubtedly had a taste for luxury. However, when Charles Rolls first met Henry Royce on 4th May 1904 in Manchester, he hesitated. He was a big fan of three- and four-cylinder cars, so he wasn't sure how he could like a two-cylinder vehicle like the one made by Henry. But after trying out Henry's car, Charles was so impressed by the quality of the Royce 10. Rolls knew he had found what he was looking for. After taking the motor car for a drive, Rolls agreed on the spot to sell as many motor cars as Royce could build under the name Rolls Royce. In 1906, the two entrepreneurs formed Rolls Royce Limited and began searching for an appropriate location for a car production factory. Royce was appointed chief engineer and works director. In addition to the two three- and four-cylinder cars, Royce started working on the development of a new six-cylinder model with 4050 HP. In December 1906, Rolls Royce launched its now famous six-cylinder Silver Ghost, which, within a year, was hailed as the world's best car. The Silver Ghost was more than a car. It was Henry and Charles's promise of quality and luxury. After completing a 15,000-mile endurance run, they decided to pull a publicity stunt to shock audiences. They placed a cup of water on the running engine, 
It was such a quiet engine that it didn't spill a single drop of liquid. At the time, it was dubbed the best car in the world. As of today, the Silver Ghost is still considered to be one of the most valuable cars. In fact, in 2005, one owner had his insured for $35 million. When Rolls-Royce was fully established in the world of automobiles and making headlines for their prestigious and luxurious cars, Charles tried to convince Henry to make an airplane engine since Charles's other passion was flying. But Henry refused it, saying that he would rather focus on cars. Still, with the growing success of the company, Charles could now devote more time to flying. In fact, he eventually resigned from his position as the technical director at Rolls-Royce so that he could solely focus on planes. Charles said he much preferred flying over driving since there are no policemen in the air. In 1909, he bought his own Wright Flyer aircraft. And one year later, he set the record as the first person in the world to make a non-stop flight across the English Channel and back. The newspapers dubbed him the greatest hero of the day. Sadly, that wasn't the only record Charles set. During an air show, Charles was flying on a day with incredibly strong wind. He was pushing the plane to its limits and when he tried to land, the aircraft began to fall apart. Charles Rolls went down in history as the first Briton to die in a plane crash in 1910. He was just 32 years old. Just one year later after losing his business partner, Henry Royce's health began to decline. His years of poor eating and lack of sleep were catching up to him. He could no longer spend his days working in the Rolls-Royce factory and began spending more time at home. Despite his poor health, Henry Royce continued to work hard, even if it meant sketching design ideas from his bedside. Even though Henry had refused to make airplane engines for years, he was forced to make them at the beginning of World War I. In 1914, they manufactured the Rolls-Royce Eagle engine, which provided half of the total horsepower for all of the Allied planes. This was the beginning of Rolls-Royce's legacy when it came to plane engines. The company's Merlin engine, which powered the famous Spitfire and Hurricane fighters during World War II, was a major technological breakthrough and helped the Allies gain an advantage in the air. After the war, Rolls-Royce returned to producing cars with a focus on luxury and refinement, resulting in such a huge demand that there was a three-year backlog. So they opened a new American Rolls-Royce factory in Springfield, Massachusetts. Within 10 years, they had produced nearly 3,000 cars. In 1930, Henry Royce was awarded the Order of the British Empire and was knighted as a baronet. Just three years later, he died at the age of 70. No matter how ill he felt, he never stopped working. His last drawings were literally made on his deathbed. The night before he died, he sketched an adjustable shock absorber on the back of an envelope and asked his nurse to send it to the workers at the factory to produce his invention. He died before the letter could be delivered. It's clear that both of these men left behind a legacy that far outlived them. The company continued to innovate and introduce new models, including the iconic Phantom, which has become a symbol of luxury and exclusivity. Rolls-Royce acquired Bentley in 1931, which was kind of a sporty and performance-oriented version of Rolls-Royce. The company also entered the civil aviation market, producing engines for commercial airline use. By 1966, Rolls-Royce had acquired the aero engine manufacturer Bristol Siddeley and had its factory near Bristol dedicate itself to producing engines for the British military. Rolls-Royce management made several miscalculations in the process, including a vast underestimation of the engine's development costs, which led the company to bankruptcy in February 1971. As a consequence, Rolls-Royce was nationalized and the British government met the company's financial obligations. It subsequently was restructured into two separate entities. Rolls-Royce Lalted, comprising its jet engine operations, was established in 1971 and became a government-owned corporation. Rolls-Royce Motor Holdings Limited, comprising the automobile and diesel engine operations, was created in 1973 and returned to private stockholders. In 1998, Rolls-Royce was acquired by BMW, which introduced a range of new technologies and innovations to the brand. It has also retained the famous Spirit of Ecstasy emblem, first registered as a Rolls-Royce trademark in 1911, which has been a defining feature for the Rolls-Royce brand for over a century, and has grown to be one of the world's most famous and iconic symbols of innovation and luxury. Rolls-Royce is one of the most successful luxury cars that money can buy, with over 130 dealerships spread over 40 countries. The brand is still primarily known for producing some of the most expensive cars in the world, such as the Rolls-Royce Cullinan Ghost Phantom Wraith and Dawn. Tufan Ergen Bilgic has been the CEO since January 2023, and his reign has proven to be essential in the company's success, but it's the vision of Sir Henry Royce and Sir Charles Rolls that truly made Rolls-Royce what it is today. Both of these men left behind a legacy that far outlived them. Thanks for joining us on this incredible journey through Rolls-Royce. If you enjoyed learning about the world's most expensive car brand,
Don't forget to check out our other video on the story behind the world's most expensive watch brand. And if you make sure to hit the like button, share it with your friends, and subscribe to our channel. Click the bell so you don't miss any of our videos. Have thoughts or stories to share? Drop a comment below. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.